Um, so, why did I create Dash? Why, why did I start it? And um, what, what was the purpose? So, early in Bitcoin's ecosystem, when, when Bitcoin started, they had started talking about uh, really interesting things like um, fungibility, scalability, what it means to have a digital currency existing on a global scale that's not controlled by any government or or anything like that. So early on in the, the Bitcoin development, they, they got so swept up in the, in the growth of everything that they had to lock down the development that they were doing on the core protocol. And the core protocol is where you can fix things like the fungibility issues that are within Bitcoin or uh, implement things like instant transactions or anything else that you want to provide to all of the network participants. And this is really what interests me. Why not take Dash to the next level? Why not really um, innovate at the core protocol level and come up with some interesting new ideas and try them out? Early on when, when Bitcoin was getting started, they were talking about the altcoin market being an experimentation center. And the good ideas from, from this, these experiments would then be taken to the rest of the ecosystem. And I want to cultivate a spirit of innovation within the community and a spirit of accepting all of the coins for, for what they are and for the value that they bring to the ecosystem. And so that's what we're trying to do with Dash. We're trying to build the, the next better version of cryptographic currency so that it benefits everyone involved. I used to work as a financial advisor before this. I, um, I started programming when I was 15 and as a financial advisor, I was writing software models to do machine learning and execute signals on behalf of clients. And I managed a firm for a while, so I'm really interested in economics, I'm interested in finance, and I'm super interested in programming. And so when I discovered Bitcoin early on, it was fascinating to me. And I really got interested in it, and then I thought, why isn't there anyone that is trying to fix the incentive issues with running a cryptographic currency like Bitcoin. Incentive issues like, why don't you get paid for running a full node? And, and things like that. So um, how many people had heard of Dash here before today? Very nice. <laughs> that, that's a good portion of the audience. How many of you had heard of Darkcoin? Okay, that's still pretty good. <laughs> So we changed the name from Darkcoin originally because when we, when we picked the name Darkcoin, we had intended it to mean a private blockchain. And what that means is that nobody can spy on you. And it got taken as an illegal type of thing. People thought that this, this is just going to be used for crime. And biases are a powerful thing. So we wanted to change the name so that we didn't have the bias attached with our project anymore. And so we picked the name Dash. So what exactly is Dash? Dash means digital cash. Digital in the sense that you can transact over the internet, you can transact instantaneously across the world without borders. Cash in the sense that it's private, it's anonymous, it's fungible, and best of all, it's decentralized. So how are we gonna go about this? And the answer is to rethink absolutely everything. Um, yeah, next one. So there are basically five issues that we have to consider. There's the infrastructure scalability issues, then there's the fungibility issues, there's speed issues, there's governance and funding issues within decentralized projects. For example, one of these currencies is going to get the size of a nation state. And what happens when you have a cryptographic currency ran in a decentralized way with decentralized team full of people that are just volunteering their time? How do you manage something like that? How do you manage a project at $14 million? How do you manage a project at $100 million or even billion dollars or $100 billion? It gets exponentially more difficult as it grows. 
Um, how do you pay for expenses like development, for legal fees? Um, how do you pay for salaries? How do you pay for contractors? These are things that the currency itself should solve in a decentralized way. And these expenses actually get bigger as time goes on. And they get worse because as things get bigger, you have more need for everything involved. So in tonight's talk, I'm going to be going over a really high level uh, description of what the Dash project is about. And we're gonna focus on the pain points within crypto and how we're planning on fixing those pain points to allow something that can actually scale and it can scale without hitting a ceiling ever. Next slide. So there are two types of scaling issues. There's scaling issues with the infrastructure and there's scaling issues with the team dynamics. What happens if volume rises? Let's say volume rises 100% every month. It's possible, it's happened with Bitcoin at times. What happens is that volume rises, everyone running a full node starts getting charged more for bandwidth and then they start dropping off of the network. As they drop off the network, the network gets weaker. When the network gets weaker, it gets vulnerable to attack and it can't service its customers correctly. And centralized companies deal with this and they deal with it exceptionally well. They deal with it by being incredibly effective and efficient by how they manage their revenue. They basically get money from seed investment, they take that money, they invest it into infrastructure, they build up an infrastructure that the users use, and then eventually they get more users and their infrastructure starts to get maxed out so they buy more. And they can buy more infrastructure because they're making more money. And so how can we do this? How can we do it in a decentralized way where we actually can provide the infrastructure in a scalable way that when the network grows, the people don't get squeezed out? And the answer is, what about the mining reward? Why is the mining reward just going to securing the transaction network? It is a decentralized reward and it's a decentralized reward that can be utilized for more than just securing the network. It can be utilized for paying for infrastructure, for paying for legal fees, for anything that furthers the network and takes care of the network. Next slide. So what is a two-tier network? And we do all of this with a two-tier network. Tier networks are all around us. When you go to college, and you have a question, who do you go ask? You would ask a professor or you would ask someone in the administration. When you go to work, you work for somebody, you work for a manager who manages the, the company. And these, these types of structures are all tiered. And in the Dash ecosystem, we have a similar in, in infrastructure. We have a tier of full node users, and then we have a second tier of specialized servers ran by volunteers that also get compensated for what they're doing. And everything around us is organized in this way, so we figured this is a good model of actually organizing our currency as well. There's one difference though. The design from the outside with colleges and where you work, it is top down. Ours is bottom up. You decide if you want to run a master node. And by doing that, you actually provide services to the network and you become part of our autonomous decision-making network as well. And we'll talk about that later. So how exactly do you qualify? All you need is a thousand dash and you need the correct server architecture. That's it. So what about instant transactions? We have an issue with speed. What if you want to transact instantaneously with a merchant? And to explain how we do this, I need to back up and talk about proof of work a little bit and how the mining process works. Essentially what happens is everyone that's a miner is competing for the next block on the network. If they get the next block, they make some money. And so they're all constantly trying to create this next block. They dump the transactions from their memory pool into the block and that's the current status of the ledger. And so what happens is if there's a disagreement on the network, 
there's two different chains that form. And then they compete to become the, the main chain on the network again. And that takes time. It takes multiple miners, and it can take hours for that to, to trickle through the network. So this is a fantastic revolutionary concept that Bitcoin had introduced to the world. But our idea adds on to that and makes a system, it's a layer, where as a second tier operator, you get registered or elected by the network randomly to vet transactions. And you are part of a decentralized panel. So it is kind of like a panel of 10 people gets elected randomly from the entire network, and then they vote, their judges, on the specific transaction. And then they propagate their, their decision about it, and the network respects it. And nobody can forge or manipulate this system because it's based off of the proof of work. It takes the entire mining network to decide who are, which master nodes are in these panels. So how exactly does this work? User broadcasts a transaction, it propagates through the network, it finds its decentralized panel, and then that panel forms and decides about the transaction and then it's respected. Um, if any transaction is propagated to the network that conflicts with it, then it's automatically rejected. The, even if you include a transaction that conflicts in a block and propagate the block, that's also rejected. So what about fungibility? Fungibility is this concept where every unit of exchange in a system like Dash should be mutually exchangeable. And essentially what this means is all of the coins have the same value. If a coin has a negative history associated with it, then it actually might suffer in value or it actually might be rejected by an exchange. And we don't want that. There's also the issue where no one really should have to worry about where their money came from that they're acquiring off of the network. If your grandma buys some Bitcoin, she shouldn't have to worry about where it came from, and she shouldn't ever have to be associated with illegal activity. And we believe that this is a really important part of digital currencies. The other aspect of it is privacy. Blockchain technology is actually really public. If you're identified on the blockchain, Everything that you do is known. If you're identified and somebody that you sent money to is identified, then that's also known. And so this is a, an issue for the long term because there will be companies that come along that try to profit off of selling this information to consumers and to companies for you know, developing uh, spying technology essentially for the blockchain. So how does the fungibility aspect work? In our system, it's the second tier again. And all you do is you reach out to uh, any one of these master nodes on the second tier randomly, and you say, I'd like to mix. And then three people get together. And essentially what happens is you take all of the money out of your wallet, fives, tens, fifties, or, or whatever, and they're denominated. And then you put the money on a table, and then the fourth person comes over, and they shuffle around the money. And so now there's a ton of bills there, and what happens is the three people come back, they take the money that they're owed, and then they walk away, but they don't know who has the bills that they originally put on the table. And they, they don't know whose money they have now. And so our system kind of works like this. It forms a wall within the currency every time this is used that can't be crossed. So you can't spy on people on our network. This is called anonymity through ambiguity. And it's a pretty interesting concept. Anonymity through ambiguity. Next slide. Governance. So something new and exciting about the Dash project is the governance system. We use the human element. So we have the second tier again. Anyone can be a part of the second tier. And then we can actually measure their opinions about certain things. Say there's a blockchain debate about raising the block limit. So we ask the, the network, do you want to raise the block limit or don't you? And then we have an exact answer that we can decide 
which way we're going to go. And then the network actually respects that answer. So how exactly does this work? All you do is you submit a pr proposal. Anyone on the network can submit a proposal, and then they lobby for support from the network. So as they lobby from support, or for support off of the network, the master nodes then decide whether they like it or not. And then they vote on it using their private keys. And the whole network knows about the status of these things as they're happening. And so the entire thing is transparent on our network. It's also trustless and decentralized. And funding. Funding is tied to this. These proposals can also fund things. They don't just have to decide random problems that arise on the network. So let's say you want to fund a project on the network. You can actually fund it using a proposal, and then you ask the master node network to, to vote on it. The, the uh, proposals that get the most support are the ones that are put in the budget, and then those are the ones that are paid at the end of the month. So what so far have we funded? We've had this system running about two months. We funded core salaries for our development team and for the rest of the core team. Uh, website design and uh, building of our, our new website. Uh, marketing campaign, so we can build some public awareness out there. And promotional events like this one. And so we can travel all over the world and then the blockchain can actually pay for what we're doing. So you might ask, what does it look like? This is a Dash Whale. A community member made this. And it's just utilizing the RPC commands to put it into a nice, friendly interface. Uh, this is the liquidity provider proposal, which makes our anonymity solution a lot faster. If you go into it, you'll see that this one has 610 yes votes, 87 no votes. And it says, will it be funded? Yes. It made it into the, the actual budget for, for this, and it's actually going to get paid uh, in a couple hours from now, actually. And then if you go down a little bit more, you can actually vote. And the Dash Whale website uses a really fancy trustless method of voting. And what it does is essentially you give it your, your keys, but you encrypt them first in a blob, and then you send this encrypted blob to the server. And when you want to vote, it sends you the blob, you decrypt it within the browser, and then you sign a message that only the network can understand, and you send the signature to Dash Whale, and then it propagates it around the network. And so we have a completely trustless browser-based proposal management system. It's pretty neat. So the virtual corporation. What does this get us? What, all of this crazy technology that, that we've invented turns out to be what we're calling a virtual corporation. And it's this idea that you can build something that's completely decentralized. It doesn't have a single centralized point in it. And it's automated. Everything is ran by code. And it's completely trustless in nature. And it's also uh, functioning at a corporation level efficiency. And what we mean by that is we take all of the best parts of centralized corporations and then we take all of the best parts of decentralized systems and marry them together. And we've come up with this idea of the virtual corporation as the vehicle that does that. So this is a brand new idea that has never been tried before. We're actually the first one to ever do this. And it's actually working out really well so far, and we're really excited about it. So it's also growth-oriented. And what do we mean by growth-oriented? Well, all centralized companies are growth-oriented. They take investment from original investors, like angel investors and, and other types of like VC funds and things like that. And then they come up with a plan. They, they put the money to use. They hire people. And then they, they go out and they try to build revenue streams. And eventually, they, they do this in such a way where they can earn more money for the original investors. And we're doing the same thing, but it's for the network itself. We put the money to use in the best way possible so that we can earn a return for the network, so that everyone in the network actually benefits. 
we actually, from, from that previous slide, we've turned it into a decentralized incubator, basically. And by, by using the masternode network as a decentralized autonomous decision-making network. And so with those two combined, we, we utilize it and then we disperse capital in a really smart way. So we have a lot of fancy stuff, right? We have the first virtual corporation, we have fungibility, we have instant transactions, and lots of other features. So with all of these features, we would be fine. We would do great over the next few years. But what, what's next? What are we trying to do? Well, we need some users. The currency is only valued at 14 million over from the last two, two years because we haven't actually found something to re reach mass adoption. And that's because we've just been trying to fix the fundamental issues of running one of these things. And so now what we're trying to do is fix ease of use and adoption. And this brings us to Dash Evolution. This is a new concept which essentially in introduces the first decentralized API. And an API, as you know, is always centralized. But by using decentralized oracles on the network, we can ensure that data is not messed with when you request it. And so what happens essentially is you have a panel of master nodes that you ask for data from, they all get it individually, and they all sign it. And then you have all of the pieces of data that came from all of them at once. And so you know that none of them interfered with your request. And so we can do this network-wide, and it scales. And it scales really, really well. And the reason that we came up with this concept is because a while back when I was trying to figure out what is wrong with ease of use, I went to my family and I asked them to, I specifically asked my mom to send me some Bitcoin. And I got nothing but questions for about a half an hour. What are these addresses? What are they? How do they work? Why, is this dangerous? Questions like that. People <coughs> inherently think there's something wrong with, with uh, interacting with Bitcoin because it just isn't intuitive. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make a completely intuitive, easy to use interface for, for dealing with digital currency. And it's essentially going to be our entire ecosystem. We're not going to do this for one singular wallet. We're going to do it from this API. And so everything on our network will interact with this API in the same way. And then it'll all be easy to use and intuitive. Uh, if you look at some of the, the specifications over here of the system, we're going to try to remove all of the fees from the system. And we have a really good strategy that will work for doing this. And it will actually allow us to not even be attacked. No one will be able to attack even though we have no fees within the system. And we're going to be releasing, this is just one component of the system. And we have about 10 more. And over the next few months, we're going to be releasing the different components that show how each of these pieces functions. And then as we release them, everyone's going to start to understand how this actually works. And as we release it, we're also going to be building this. And we'll be releasing videos and things like that showing exactly what it looks like to interact with it. It's a brand new concept that no one has thought of yet. And it's going to be really interesting to see how, how people interact with it. And, if they like it, and you know, what other types of innovations come from it eventually. So the idea behind all of this is we're trying to make a culture of innovation within cryptocurrency. We feel like we could actually make this culture, and then we would have a bunch of different projects all benefiting from trying to build the best technology in different ways with innovation coming from a bunch of projects at once, all trying to solve these fundamental issues, we'll come up with the best possible answers. And so we want a culture that is accepting of all the coins. All of the coins are here for a reason. And 
we all are going to experiment with it and try to fix various issues and then we can come together and figure out what the right solution is for everyone. And there's no other way to do this besides at the smaller level on, on each of these individual coins because when these projects get too big, they run away from you. And then you have to start taking care of the scalability and things like that. The design here is also designed so that it can scale without hitting a ceiling. And that, that's, one of our, that's been one of our major concerns this entire time. When we start to grow, we don't want a ceiling. We don't want to hit some unforeseen barrier that stops adoption. Because once you hit that, it turns off users and then you have to fix it and it takes a lot of time. And these systems can expand very, very quickly if they're made correctly. And so that's, that's what we're trying to do. Next slide. So that was my presentation. And uh, I thank you guys for coming out and it's been a lot of fun in the Netherlands and uh, I hope to see you guys again soon sometime.